hello hello everyone welcome back to the channel miss crochet and coffee here and today we are doing a whipping chat now as you can tell i'm not whipping on anything and if you're new to diamond painting you don't know what whip stands for whip stands for work in progress um i am done diamond painting for the year um it's kind of a ocd thing i don't want to start at the end of the year and then finish it's just a thing it's a thing it's a thing anywho but we have some stories for you today, so go ahead and get out whatever it is you're working on. Work along with me or work to me because I'm going to be chit-chatting. Um, you might see me look down. I have dogs, and they're like in my face because I'm talking to myself. So they're just kind of like, Mommy, are you okay? Mentally, are you okay? And I'm just like, no. Current temperature today is negative 12 degrees. Um, I think our high for today is negative 3. So that's a plus. It's getting warmer. Yeah, I said warmer and negative in the same sentence. We are not okay. Check on your Northwest friends, okay? <laughs> Anyways, how did you guys' holiday go? I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Um, let's get started by talking about my doctor's appointment. So, because I missed Friday because they were doing the Christmas 48-hour thing. And to be respectful to those creators, I decided to not go live which i'm glad that i didn't because we ended up cleaning all day okay so let's get started so thursday i had a doctor's appointment for my six week checkup for my hysterectomy and she said everything looked great um just take it easy but i am finally off of restriction which means i can lift things i can clean things i can vacuum <laughs> and so i was like so excited and then mr coffee actually took the day off because he stayed home and watch the kids while I went to my doctor's appointment and then when he you know when I got back he was just kind of like there's no point in me going to work there's nothing to do and his boss pretty much told him don't worry about coming in just take the day off so we got to spend Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and Monday with Mr. Coffee so that was a lot of fun because we did a lot of family things family oriented things I guess remember this year's Christmas theme was together <laughs> so <coughs> Uh, so Thursday, we just, uh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. That's Minna Minna. She's calling to let me know that she had a good Christmas. Anywho, um, so Thursday, we just kind of all hung out. It was just kind of a lazy day. We just hung out around the house. Um, I finished Butt and I, which there will be a post review going up for Butt and I on Thursday of this week. So if you were someone who did not want to see the mystery kit, do not tune into Thursday's video. Don't worry. As, as I have been doing, I will keep the secrecy of the video a secret unless you want to see it. Um, there is a mystery diamond painting uh, revealed group that I will link down in the comment section of this video. And they are showing their progress on the mystery kits. Um, also on the Diamond Painting or the Diamond Art Club VIP group, if you go into the events, they are also showing progress in there under the Mystery Painting Reveal uh, event. They are showing progress and finishes there as well. So if you would like to see what the two mystery diamond paintings look like, those will be there for you. Either way. So Thursday we hung out. It was just kind of a chill day. We, you know, like I said, I finished Butt and I, and then we made dinner. And then, uh, then comes Friday. Friday is Christmas Eve. We wake up and I told Mr. Coffee Thursday night, I'm like, I really want to get the house clean. And he goes, okay. Apparently he didn't hear me when I said, we really need to get the house clean. And so when I woke up Friday, I was just like, drill sergeant, Get up, get up, time to get up, time to get up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I put everybody to work. I sat in this house for three months watching these monsters <laughs> destroy this house, okay? And I'm like, and when, when I had my, what? When I got diagnosed with COVID, it was right before the weekend that week, I believe. Because I usually clean, deep clean Saturday, laundry Sunday, fresh for the week, Monday. And I'm pretty sure it was... But it like somewhere between there where I ended up like with the whole COVID thing. And then shortly after COVID, if you remember, I had just started Black Girl Magic and then it was the weekend. So it was a Friday night when I started her. That next morning, I went in for emergency gallbladder removal surgery and my hernia surgery. Then after that, a month later, I was still on restriction. So I couldn't like deep clean my house like I wanted to. So I had to like leave it up to the kids and Mr. Coffee. 
Don't worry about it. If you hear noises outside, they're plowing. We're, we, we got quite a bit of snow. Anyways, um, so yeah, so I had to leave up the, the cleaning to Mr. Coffee and the kids. So I ended up spot cleaning a lot because I couldn't, I can't vacuum, I can't sweep, which I didn't realize that that was a thing. And I realized shortly after I swept for the first time why they say don't do that, especially after the hernia surgery, because like my stomach was just like, no, mm -mm, don't do that. Sit down, sit it down. And so a day, like the day I got off restriction from my gallbladder surgery, boom, I had my hysterectomy. It has now been six weeks since the hysterectomy. Hard to believe it's been that long, but it has been that long. And I am free and clear of all restrictions. So when I, like I said, when I got up Friday, I was like, let's go. We're cleaning this house. Everybody's helping. The major thing I wanted to do was the bathrooms because they had been clean, but not deep clean. Like I want, I want deep clean. I want you to only see assholes and elbows. Okay. I want it deep clean. And so I decided nobody's going to clean them like me. And if you remember, I have five bathrooms in my house. Not a flex, believe me. Try cleaning five, five toilets in a day. Or technically four. Four toilets because the, the guest room, bathroom doesn't get touched. So I just go in there and kind of like dust things off a bit, which doesn't even really need it, but just in case. Um, and I mentioned last week that uh, there was something going on with Mr. Coffee's mom, and so she wouldn't be up to visit. Um, we did talk to her, and she is doing much better now. Um but she's going to be okay. Uh, it, it was just kind of one of those fluke medical emergency things that kind of happened. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to talk about it. Um, so I get up and Mr. Coffee's like, well, what do, you, what do you want me to do? Do I clean our room? And I'm like, mm -mm. no, because I've been telling Mr. Coffee for three months that I want him to get into that living room and clean it because that's his area. Now we both have our own area. So I have back here, which is my craft room. He has the front room, which is his gamer central. Nobody sits up there unless he's there. Now, can we sit up there? Yes. But why would we want to sit there when all the craft stuff is back here? I don't know. So nobody typically sits up there unless he's up there. And even when he's up there, the kids are usually in their room by the time he gets home. So it's just kind of one of those things where it's just like, nah, that's your area, dude. You got that. So I was like, you need to move the couches to make sure that there's no mess underneath the couch from the ferrets because what the ferrets like to do is they like to go under there and hide all their stuff because we have recliners and in the middle of our couch there's no recliner so that's where they hide and that's one of their hidey holes so I needed him to clean out the hidey hole readjust the tube because there's a tube that also runs behind the couch for if the ferrets are out and they need to get away from the dogs they can go behind the couch that's somewhere the dogs can't go and it's in their little tube so they feel I guess safer in there so I'm like you need readjust the tube clean out all the the ferret litter boxes because we have of course like, like I said we have litter boxes that are pretty much all over the house and uh I'm like you need to clean by clean them I mean like dump all the litter out scrub them down with hot water and, and soap and bleach and then rinse them out let them dry so that we can refill them with fresh litter and stuff and I'm like we also need to hang pictures I've been asking this man for eight months to hang pictures since we moved in here and he goes all right I got it and I'm like all right See you in 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, he comes back. What all did you want me to do again? Look, listen. <laughs> I had to write him a note. Do this. <laughs> Honey, do this. So I had got, I got him situated. Took me a bit. Got him situated. Then Orion's just like, what do you want me to do, mom? Clean your room, dude. Just, just clean your room. And Maggie's like, me too? I'm like, and I look over in her room and it looks like a bomb exploded. And I'm like, yes. Problem is, Maggie is missing socks. Now, most of you would think, oh, well, the dryer's eating them. No, no. Maggie was missing socks, and we could not figure out what she was doing with her socks. And I tell her numerous times a day, do not put clothes in your toy box. We just recently bought her 50 pairs of new socks, literally like three or four months ago. And she had lost all of the socks except for like two pairs. And I'm like, well, where are your socks? Like, why are you wearing the same socks over again? And she's like, I can't find my other socks. I'm like, did you, did you look for them though? And she's like, yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. You know how kids look for things? Mm-mm. So I was like, mm, let's, let's see if we can find your socks. Went in her toy box and it's all three socks on the, cause she has one of those clear giant Tupperware containers. It's not Tupperware, it's rubber 
Rubbermaid containers. It's one of those gigantic ones, like the tall, clear ones, and they're really long. She has one of those in her closet, and I could see three socks in the clear, like, siding of it. And I was just like, oh, sister, you're not about to like me. So I had to pull out all of her toy boxes, which there's two Rubbermaid containers and a crate. Pull out all three of them and dump them in the middle of her floor. There was food wrappers. There were socks. There were all kinds of things. I found my hairbrush in there. I'm like, what are you doing with my hairbrush? You have two hairbrushes. I'm like, why is there food up here? Maggie likes to take food. And she's not stealing it because we don't give it to her. She's stealing it because she can eat it in her room if she takes it upstairs. We don't allow food upstairs for this reason because then she eats it throws the wrapper down on the floor or hides it somewhere, forgets about it. I'm like, that's how we're going to get bugs. Mama don't do bugs. Uh-uh. Not today, Jesus. Not today. Fix it, Lord. Fix it. Again, it's cold. Got my coffee. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, all right, we're going to help. We're going to help you out here. You got one pile for clothes, one pile for trash, one pile for toys. Separate everything. Now, with Maggie, you can't do like a normal kid. You can't just put her in a room and tell her to clean it. You got to give her step-by-step -step instructions because her brain, for some reason, just can't be like, oh, put the stuff where it belongs. Nay, nay. You have to give her step-by-step -step instructions. She is her father's child. And so I had to write out like in a, on a, her, her dry board. She has a dry erase board. I had to write out, this is what you're going to do. Separate trash. And then it also helps her read because if she wants to remember what she has to do, she has to read the board. So it's like separate trash, clothes, and, tra uh, and toys. So she goes, okay, mommy, I got this. 20 minutes later, la, 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 la. Maggie, what are you doing? Playing with my toy. No, this is not the time. Santa does not want you playing with your toys because he's trying to bring you new toys. Now, we did the Elf on the Shelf idea where we donated toys. That was one of the posts that I didn't put up because I don't like putting up when I do good deeds. It's just a weird thing about I have. I don't I don't like broadcasting it, so I didn't do it. Uh, Smitty left. He did leave early, and then that's another reason why you stopped seeing the posts is because Maggie wouldn't stop touching him. He did leave early, but right before he left, he had the kids donate half their toys to children that are less fortunate. And what he what they didn't donate that they didn't want that wasn't gently used got chucked. So she made room for her new stuff. The problem is Maggie was misbehaving and has been misbehaving for the last couple of months. So Maggie didn't get all of her Christmas presents. We held some of them back. Now there was five gifts that we got her that were toys. The rest of the stuff we got her were clothes. So she didn't get five of the toys. And we told her, you have to do good deeds and behave to get those toys. Well, she got two. She got, she got two. I don't see her getting the rest of them, to be honest. I'm like, at this point, we might as well just save them for her birthday. I, I, I can't say I've given up on her because I haven't, but I've given up trying to get her to listen when you, like, you got to tell Maggie things multiple times. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm wasting all the air in my lungs for this. I don't got a whole lot in this life, and I don't got a lot of air in my lungs. DAC done took half of it. I don't got time to be sitting here fussing at you about, you know, cleaning your room all the time. So, finally get her motivated to clean her room. I'm elbows deep, okay? And the, the grease of the elbow is working on these showers. I am scrubbing the shit out of these showers. You hear me? I have all the bathroom smelling like flowers and bleach. I was the pine saw lady. The power of pine saw, baby. I was in there, okay? Get all three of the bathrooms upstairs that needed to be done, done. I go into the guest room. I just kind of wipe it off, and I'm like, eh, it's clean. And so Orion's like, Mom, is there anything we can do about my bathroom? Because my his toilet doesn't flush correctly. I told, I think I told you guys that in another video, where you have to press and hold down their, their toilet to get it to flush. And I'm like, I got this. Now, as a stay-at-home mom, you wear many hats. You're a chef. You're a doctor. You're a plumber. And I'm just like, what do we got? Now, last week I was telling you guys about the story that Maggie had us jump out of her our bed because she told, or she had me jump out of bed thinking that there was somebody in her room and it was her toilet running. What I forgot to mention was Maggie has been afraid of the bathroom. Maggie just found out that she has an allergy to chocolate. Now, this is something that she hasn't had before. So 
whenever she drinks chocolate milk, um, she gets sick, like st sick to her stomach to the point where she has to go use the bathroom. Well, she, the first time she got sick, she clogged the toilet. And I'm like, how can something so small clog a whole toilet? What? And I'm thinking, okay, she must have used too much tissue. Problem is, that then made her fearful to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, don't hold it in because it's just going to make it worse. And when she was drinking the chocolate milk, it was making it worse. So we got rid of the chocolate milk and stuff in the house because then she started sneaking and getting it because we wouldn't let her have it. So she would sneak and get it when we weren't paying attention. And then we would wonder why she was so sick. It's because she was sneaking and getting it. So I, that's when I went into the fridge, poured out all the chocolate milk, got rid of all the chocolate drinks that we have in the house. And I was like, nope, nope, you're, you're, not, you're not getting sick anymore. And Ryan's like, oh, come on, I would have drank that. Nah, look, listen, no, nah, y'all don't need it. So she is fearful of the toilet. And so I told her, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, go try to take a look at your toilet, see if I can fix it. Sure enough, two minutes I fix it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And now he can flush his toilet like a regular toilet. I'm like, look at me go. Matter of fact, Maggie's problem, toilet was having the same issue. So I go in her bathroom, fix hers. All right, bet. Go in my bathroom, can't fix mine. Of course not. Why, why would I be able to fix mine? So I'm like, well, shit. Well, then I go downstairs and I go to clean that last bathroom. Now, I'm I'm tired at this point. Like, I am exhausted. But I'm like, I got one more bathroom to go and it's a half bath. So it's just a mirror, a sink, and a toilet. That's it. I got to wipe down the mirror, clean this countertop and the sink, scrub the toilet, sweep them off the floor. Boom, I'm done. And I'm thinking, that's not a lot. I got this. Then my parents call. You ever been motivated to do something and in the middle of motivation, somebody interrupts you and then you have zero motivation left? That was me, okay? Halfway before I finished my, my bathroom, Mr. Coffee comes upstairs and qu first question of the video, when do you wrap gifts? Is this something that you do as they come in or do you do it like the night before? How do you wrap gifts? Because usually what we do, or I should say what he does, is he won't wrap anything until after the kids have gone to sleep on Christmas Eve. And so he comes upstairs, it's like two o'clock, and he's like, I'm gonna start wrapping gifts. Why? Well, why are you doing this so early? And he's like, cause I, I have motivation to do something. Oh, okay, I get I get that, I get that. Yep, I get I get that. So he decided to wrap them early. So I, have, of course, had to keep the kids out of our room, which was easy. And then I go over to Orion's room to let, you know, because I first go to Maggie's room, have to redirect her. Hey, hey, get back, get back to cleaning, back to cleaning. Go over to Orion's room. I open his door. And he's just sitting there on his little gamer chair. And I'm like, well, what the hell are you doing now? He's like, playing. Can I not play my game? I'm like, I'm looking around his room. His room is all clean. I'm like, let me inspect this because I don't. I don't trust tiny humans. So I go over to his bookshelf, bookshelf nice and straightened up. I go to his closet, closet nice and straightened up, clothes hung up correctly. Look under his bed, look behind his bed. Uh, everything looks great. Under his desk, everything looks great. He straightened up his desk. The only thing he didn't work, he didn't do was straighten up the top of his dresser because he has like some extra jackets up there for some reason. I don't freaking know. And I was just like, straighten up the top of your dresser and you're good. And he was like, all right. And then I, I leave and I come back for something. I had to take in uh I had to take and get something out of the craft room. And I go, hey, because I was getting ready to take the dogs out. I'm like, have you seen Killian? And he's like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. Because I was like, hold up, where's my where's my dog? Now, the dogs will randomly go hide places. And they're like, it's, it's one of those things where they hide in plain sight. So it's not like they're hiding somewhere that, like, I can't find them. Like, they're not under something. Usually it's somewhere stupid. Like, they're in the middle of the hallway upstairs. And I'm downstairs going, where's the dogs? Well, here, I go to get whatever I needed out of the, I think it was like yarn or something for a project I'm starting. I go to get yarn, I come out of the, the guest room, I close the door, and I just happen to look over, and Killian's laying there in the middle of Orion's bed. And I'm like, Orion, I thought you said you hadn't seen Killian. I did it. Who's that? He's like, he looks at, oh. Oh, yeah. Now, Killian does this. Killian, I don't know what it is about Orion, but Killian likes Orion. I think it's just because Orion doesn't really mess with the dogs like that. Like, Orion is a cat person. He doesn't mind dogs, but he's a cat person, okay? So, Killian 
knowingly will go in his room because he knows he can go there unbothered versus like in Maggie's room where she would try to ride him, brush him with her Barbie doll toys, which we had to, you know, tell her, you know, please stop brushing the dog with your Barbie's toys and then brushing your dog's hair, your dolly's hair. Because it looked like she had given her, her Barbie doll dog highlights because there was like white and black fur all throughout this brown haired doll baby she had. And I was like, yeah, don't brush the dog with the same brush you're brushing your dolly's hair with. That's gross. And so I go downstairs. I, I talk to my family and I go and clean that bathroom. And then I'm like, okay, what all do I need to do now? And I'm like, the kitchen. It's not that big. I got this. I look in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, F that kitchen. I swept and mopped and went on about my god dang own business. I was too tired. So I go sit down. Mr. Coffee comes down. He goes, did you walk the dogs? And I was like, Oh, crap. I knew I forgot to do something. Went up there looking for Killian and everything. Completely still forgot to go go walk the dogs. So he goes, all right, that's no problem. I, I'll walk them. I'm like, all right, you sure? I can go walk them. It's not a problem. He's like, no, I got this. I'm like, all right. As he's going to leave, he goes, hold up. What are we having for dinner? What are you cooking? What am I cooking? I ain't cooking nothing. <laughs> he goes, what? I'm like, I ain't cooking nothing. What? I'm tired. I, I ain't about to cook nothing. And he's like, well, what are we going to do for food? Oh, no, we're going to starve to death. I'm like, uh, there are such thing as restaurants? He goes, yeah, but they close early on Christmas Eve. I'm like, not all of them. If nothing else, there are two types of foods you can get on, on Christmas Eve. Pizza and Chinese food, both of which are staples in my house. So I'm like, pick one. I didn't feel like having Chinese food. I just didn't feel like. So I was like, pizza. He's like, what kind of pizza? I'm like, well, not Little Caesars. They're closed. Little Caesars is, like, since we moved here, when I first, or, I, I've never had Little Caesars until we moved here. And then Pizza Hut and Domino's went to the wayside because the, Little Caesars was better. In my opinion, of those three, Little Caesars got it. Like, they got it. Anything that says hot and ready for $5, look, listen, you got my vote. So I was like, well, Little Caesars is closed, so we're going to have to go with uh, Domino's or Pizza Hut, which I would rather Pizza Hut because I don't, okay. Am I the only one that notices this? On the bottom of Domino's' pizza, there's always a lot of flour. Which I'm going to guess is probably there to soak up all the grease out of their pizza. Pizza Hut doesn't have that. Their pizza is just grease deliciousness. So I'm like, I don't really want... I don't want Domino's. I want Pizza Hut. So he goes over to Pizza Hut. While he's at Pizza Hut, okay, he's on the phone with me. Because he can't do it by himself, apparently. I'm like, how hard is it to get a sausage and a pepperoni pizza? <laughs> Anyways, I'm on the phone and I hear some guy yelling in the background. I'm like, what the hell is that? He goes, you're going to have to hold on a second. Is he hollering at you? Is that why you're telling me to hold on right now? Next thing I know, I hear Mr. Coffee start yelling. Look, listen, Mr. Coffee is not normally a mean person. He can be, but not usually. Unless you push him to that point, which apparently this guy did because the guy was yelling at the employees at Pizza Hut because it was taking too long for his pizza. It shouldn't take this long. I don't care how many people are waiting in your parking lot to get pizza. I don't feel like cooking and I should have my food as soon as I get in here. And they're like, um, sir, no. And that's not how it's working today. Well, I guess this guy decided he was going to call the ruckus. And Mr. Coffee told him pretty much to shut the hell up and sit down like the rest of them and wait and be patient because it's only these four people working in here and obviously they're shorthanded on Christmas Eve when they could be with their family. So the least you could do is stop acting like an entitled ass and sit your ass down and be patient. The guy didn't say anything after that. At least I didn't hear anything. And Mr. Coffee gets back on the phone. And he goes, ignorant fuckers. And I was like, Mr. Coffee. He's like, what? I'm like, don't holler at me. What you ain't about to do is holler at me. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't say nothing to you. Sorry, hon. I'm sorry. That just really made me mad. Well, apparently the people at Pizza Hut were so appreciative. We got a, we, we got free pizza. And we got four of them. So they doubled our order. Okay. <laughs> that just means we got lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> Even though Orion can throw down a whole pizza by himself in one sitting. Usually we only let him have five pieces. But we might as well just let him have the three. But the problem is, I'm like, I, look, the way your body is set up, you don't need to be eating that many slices of pizza in one sitting. Like, you don't do it. Like, I'm like, I need you to be more active if you're going to eat that much pizza. And he goes, okay, I'll try to be more active, mommy. I'm like, all right, you promise? And he's like, yeah. By more active, I meant, like, come out and play games with the family. So that, that, was, that was Christmas Eve. Yeah, 
that was just Christmas Eve. It took us four hours to get through the stuff in Maggie's room. Orion was done cleaning his room in about 20, 30 minutes because Orion, whenever I would tell them to go clean their rooms, he would actually listen and went to go clean his room. Maggie would not. She would just go up there and play. So that's why it took us so long to finish her room. So we finally did get everything finished. House looking good. House smelling good. Ferret's cage all wiped out with bleach and water and, and cage spray. And they got their new bedding put back in. Um... Because they have, right now they have, I need to buy another set. But they have two um, sets of bedding. And so we switched out the bedding so that we could wash one set while they use the other set. And I'm just like, oh, well, you know, the house is looking good. It's smelling good. The dogs look good. I brushed the dog. I was like, yeah, I got this. Look, listen, I was tired, okay? I was exhausted. And Mr. Coffee's like, just don't overdo it like that again. I'm like... The sad part is I won't have to do that again probably for another two weeks. If we keep up on this, I don't have to do it again for two weeks. So as I, I won't overdo it again if you guys help me around the house a little bit more. And so that I don't have to keep doing this. Now, after eight weeks, I can go on and live my life without any problems. The only other thing she said, try not to lift anything over 50 pounds, right? Like, like don't lift your kids. And I'm like, I don't know if you realize this. My kids are 9 and 10. They're not looking to be lifted up off the ground, but okay. So, that was Christmas Eve. Now we go to Christmas. I wake up on Christmas morning. Now, I am like a giant child on Christmas, okay? Even if I don't get anything, I'm like a big kid. I like waking up Christmas morning. I like opening up gifts. Also, do you open up gifts in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening? Let me know that down in the comments, because I can tell you right now, if you open up gifts in the evening, you... Ma'am, sir, person are a nightmare human. How can you sit there and walk past all those gifts all day and then just be like, I'm just going to live my life until this evening and then we'll have Christmas. No, you open them in the morning. <laughs> so I'm laying in bed. It's like, I don't know, 930. And I'm like, mm, I'm excited. Now, I get excited because of the kids' excitement towards things. Like, I, if I know, I like this year... I was excited because Orion got this really cool game controller. I found it on Amazon, and it's literally purple with a cat, tacos, and rainbows. Orion's favorite things. I don't know if Orion likes rainbows, though. His favorite color is purple, but I don't know if he likes rainbows. Anyways, um, he might just because he sees them so much because everything in my house has some kind of rainbow something to it. So, like, he might like rainbow. I don't know. Anyways, um, so I was excited for him to get that. And then Maggie got a couple of outfits that I was really excited for her to get. And then we, of course, every year we take pictures on Christmas as a family. And we're usually wearing pajamas. Now, every year that we do that, those pajamas are provided to us by Becky's Madness for Crafting. She every year buys us matching jammies and we love them. And we take we make sure to take a picture in them every year. Now, this year... Hands down, my favorite jammies we've ever gotten. Now, the kids' jammies, I actually had to find them matching jammies because she couldn't... Wherever she buys the jammies, they didn't have it in the kids' size matching. So she just bought them two separate sets of jammies, which when they saw them, they just ripped into them like they were like little savages. They're like, oh, Ryan's like, oh, Minecraft jammies! And Maggie's like, hello, kitty! Like, a kid's face on Christmas is enough. You need to record that. And I didn't post a lot of pictures of kids opening gifts and stuff like that. That's kind of stuff that I would like to keep to myself. And I feel like that's kind of like flossing on people. And I don't want to be braggadocious on the internet. So like, I don't typically... I, 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 I might take a picture of the presents under the tree. Which I don't think I did this year. But I don't take pictures of the kids opening their gifts or, or showing what they got. And then when I label stuff, or when stuff gets labeled... Santa buys clothes, mommy and daddy buy toys because that way all kids can get toys for Christmas and all kids can get um, clothes. But Santa wants us to make sure that the kids are warm. So it's it's one of those things where I, I, I make sure they, they have that, you know, those two separate piles, Santa's gifts, mama and daddy's gifts. And then, of course, there's the family. And of course, if you have family like mine where they don't live anywhere near you and you have to like video call them to enjoy Christmas with them. Um, luckily for us, Minna called us a couple of days before Christmas to open her gifts. I let her open her gifts a little bit early because I knew she was going to be out of town. She travels a lot for Christmas. Um, Minna essentially has 
I want to say five or six different Christmases because usually she has me and her, me and Jordan, then her dad and his girlfriend, then my parents, Jordan's mom, uh, her dad's girlfriend's family, and then there's somewhere, and then she has uh, with her nana, uh, Phillips, who she stays with in North, um, in Pennsylvania, and then of course with her dad, so maybe seven Christmases. Essentially, she travels the state of Pennsylvania all Christmas. It sounds miserable to me, but she loves it. She loves the fact that she can go to different houses, and we all do this thing where she makes up a master list of gifts. And then she gives me the list first, I pass it to her dad, I pass it to my parents, and we all mark off what we get her until the list is pretty much empty. As long as it's reasonable. Like, we ain't gonna be out here buying tablets and new cell phones and stuff, which she's due for an upgrade, but we ain't gonna tell her that just yet because we're looking to switch services. Um, or service providers. So I'm sitting there, and we had already called Minna, so I didn't have to worry about calling Minna until later that evening, which I just messaged her and said, Merry Christmas, and she was like, Merry Christmas. She prefers to message than to be on the phone, which I can completely understand that. So, plus she wanted to play and do the things that she, she got things for Christmas that she wanted to do, and I was just like, okay, bet. So, first prayer, first phone call is to my parents, of course, and my parents, uh, we do the same thing with the grandparents. Uh, we essentially make up a have the kids make up a list. Mr. Coffee's mom gets a certain side of the list. My parents get a certain side of the list. And then my their uh, aunts and uncles, if they want to participate and buy something for the kids, which I made a big deal about it this year, um, about them buying stuff for the kids and not me and Mr. Coffee. Because I don't want people to be out here going broke trying to buy Christmas presents for people. And I don't really talk to my family like that. So I'm like, don't buy me nothing. I'm gonna buy them kids something. And they're like, well, what do I buy them? Something to stay warm. The theme this year is togetherness and warmth. <laughs> because we knew we were getting into dangerous temperatures. Uh, I think the worst we saw was negative 34 with a real fill of negative 50. And that was the day, I want to say the day of Christmas, maybe? It was really bad on Christmas. Um... But it's been hella cold, so I'm like, it's a good thing that I ask everybody to get kids warm weather stuff. And what Mr. Coffee's mom likes to do is she has made these two giant stockings, okay? And each stocking has the kids' names on them. And what she does is she will randomly stuff them full of random little gifts, like little toys that they would like and stuff like that. And they're always like the best little toys you can find. Like she got those little uh, slap hands with the little... It has like a handle on it and you can like take and fling it and it's made of like elastic so you can fling it and get stuck to things. She got, she always gets them uh, one of those because they love those because they'll just sit around all day smacking each other with those. And they got like a Ryan got the spitting llama. Now the llama, what you do is you squeeze its stomach and it has a ball in its mouth and it spits it out at you. And I'm like, I want a spitting llama. <laughs> I legit told my mama-in-law I want to spit in llama. But, uh, yeah, so Christmas morning, let's let's go back to the beginning here. Christmas morning, we, I wake up, nobody else is up. And I'm, like, sitting there all giddy and excited. And I'm like, eh, eh. So, Mr. Coffee, I was like, wake up, wake up, wake up. And he's like, oh, uh, what, what? I'm like, Merry Christmas. And he's like, oh, God. I'm like, what? And he's like, here we go. I look at the clock, it's like, we sat there and talked for a little bit. So it was like 10.30, and I'm like, why aren't these kids up yet? Like, any other day, these kids be trying to get out of bed at 7 a.m. every morning. Except for if they have to go to school, or we need them to do something. They will sleep in those days. But any other day, 7, 8 o'clock. And I'm like, what the hell? Christmas, they decided they weren't going to get up early. I'm like, y'all tired from cleaning? <laughs> look, listen, I'm going to need you to get up. It's Christmas. I, I was going to go start it with Maggie, but Maggie's kind of cranky if you wake her up. So what I do for Maggie is I'll open her door and start talking because she knows you enough that she'll, that'll she wake her up and she'll be like, who are you talking to, mama? <laughs> so I don't technically wake her up. She hears me talking and then she she gets out to see what I'm doing. I go into Orion's room. He's asleep. Mouth open, drool everywhere. And I'm just like, Orion, Orion, honey, it's Christmas. Wake up. And he's like, mm. Fool, I said it's Christmas. Orion, wake up, it's Christmas. And he's like, Mom, what? I'm like, it's Christmas, Orion. He's like, Mom, I'm tired. I don't 
Karen, it's Christmas. So I started dragging him out of bed, which is that picture y'all saw. Because literally, as I have one of his feet in my hand, I'm snapping pictures. <laughs> I get him out of bed. I'm like, get up. Let's go get breakfast so we can have Christmas. So they come downstairs. And I'm like, you guys want me to cook? No. Oh, screw you, kid. They don't like grits. I like grits. And I was like, y'all want pancakes? No, we just want cereal. All right, bet. So they got cereal. And then, of course, like I said, first person we called was my parents. And my parents uh, were like, you know, they, they watched the kids open their gifts. And they're like, thanks, Papa. Thanks, Nana. I believe my mom got them, like, a bunch of sweatpants and shirts and stuff and matching outfits and whatnots. And then, of course, Papa had to let us represent. He bought everybody a Alabama jacket because Roll Tide. Why not? We live in North Dakota. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how many Alabama uh, fans are out here. So he bought us all Alabama jackets. And I'm like, all right, bet. And then I was like, all right, well, we got to let you guys go. We got a couple more phone calls to make. Then we call Uncle Jesse. If you don't remember Uncle Jesse, that's obviously Mr. Coffee's brother. And uh, he's the, music the musician that lives up in New York. And we call him because he had bought the kids gifts this year. And I was like, all right, guys, open up your gifts for Uncle Jesse. Orion gets this gigantic box. Meanwhile, Maggie gets this little box. And she's looking at his box. She looks at her box. She goes, ooh, I got a better gift than you. My box is small. Look, listen, my children have been watching Darman. If you don't know what this is, it's like an inspirational video type guy. Um, and there was a story on there about the best gifts come in small packages or something. So Maggie's like, oh, I got a good gift. So they open up the box. Orion got two beanbag blocks. One is like a block of dirt or an Enderman or something from Minecraft. The other one is a loot crate from Fortnite. And so he got these two blocks for his room. He has essentially more furniture that he won't know how to use. Because um, he don't know how to use furniture. Look, we've tried. It just it just doesn't work out. It, we, we're trying. We're trying. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right. All right. Bet. All right. All right. Mm, mm. Maggie opens hers. And I knew what hers was. And I was just like, oh, get ready for it. Now, one of the things I hate about Christmas is the little pieces of everything. Everything has to be little pieces. So I'm like, oh my God, this is, it wasn't little, little pieces. What it is, is a magnetic play thing. It's like magnetic Legos, except for you don't connect them by pushing them together. Um, they're magnets, so you just kind of touch them. And you can make towers and cars and all kinds of fun stuff. That probably is her favorite gift because she did not want to open up and did not care about opening up anything else. That's what she wanted. And I'm like, well, Maggie, you got another, you know, box of stuff over here. And there was really only one thing that toy-wise that Maggie asked for. And I think his name is Go Go Turtle. And Turtle is spelled T-U-R-D space D-L-E. Turd. Oh, and I'm thinking, what the hell is that? We'll find out here soon. So I'm sitting back and Maggie goes over to play with her magnets. Orion's like laying on his bean bags and he goes, there go. Do we have anything else to open? And I'm like, yeah, we got to call Graham, Graham to open your gifts. Because that's what they call Mr. Coffee's mom. That's Graham, Graham. So they call her. And, you know, she, that's when she lets us know that she's doing fine. She has a couple of doctor's appointments coming up. But other than that, she's doing fine. I'm like, all right, bet. So we pull out their stockings. Now, like I said, the way these stockings work is that she fills them full of random toys and snacks. Like she gets snacks in there too because she's a grandmother. So you can't forget the snacks. So it's just a bunch of little toys, and then they'll get a couple of things that they ask for. I don't remember all what was in Matt Orion's stocking. They usually get about the same thing because she knows that they'll fight if they don't. So they, they got about the same thing. And, like, there was, like, cotton, like, sour cotton candy in there. I'm like, sour cotton candy? Oh, God, no. Like, no. Ew. And so what we then do is once they empty the stockings of all the gifts, we then... Uh, package the stockings back up and send them back to work because then every year she sends them back full of toys. And so we went through and got through all that. Mr. Coffee talked to his mom for a little bit and then he let her go and then we let her, them open up gifts from us. Which, like I said, most of the gifts from us were clothes because that's what they needed. They needed new sweatpants. They're growing like weeds over here. So I needed them to have more sweatpants and stuff. Well, I think they have enough sweatpants to last them about two weeks each. They can go two weeks without having to do laundry, and they would still have new outfits every day. So I was like, all right, bet. Um, 
they got a couple of new jackets and I should have probably asked somebody to get them like hats and gloves and scarves and stuff, but I can get that stuff myself. And uh, yeah, Maggie or Ryan goes to open up his first gift that wasn't closed and it was a new pair, a new headset because he plays with his friends from school. And it, it always looks like he's chewing up his headsets or something like this, the, the, the phone on the headphone, the diffuser that they, they use. It always looks like he's chewing on it. And I'm like, stop. Well, and then he uses his, his earphones for school as well. And I'm like, I want you to have a good pair of headphones for when you're, you know, at school so you can hear your laptop and stuff because he was saying about one of the ears was going out. So we bought him a new headset. He was super excited. This one lights up. And yeah, so he's he's excited about that. The next thing he got was a game controller, which is the game controller I was telling you guys about with the, the cat, the taco, and the rainbows. He fell in love. He didn't. He's like, can I go play? Well, hold on a second, dude. Jews, uh, or shoot, Jews. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. So I'm just like, all right. Maggie goes to open her gift, and she goes, "What's this?" And it's just a long box, and it has like a bunch of Christmas stuff all over it and numbers. And she goes, "What's this?" Like it's an advent calendar. Now, when I purchased the advent calendar, it said it would be here in three days. It took it 23 days to get here. Literally, as Mr. Coffee was wrapping gifts, it showed up. Yep. So I was like, what the hell? Um, so I'm sitting there, and she, she's like, well, what do I do with it? I'm like, you just open up the, the things, Maggie. And she's like, she goes to put her finger in it. She can't open it. She's like, how do I open it? I'm like, well, just pull it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm like, that's hard. I'm like, I don't know, punch it or something. So she starts punching this box. And in this box is an advent calendar of fidget toys. Now, like I said before, Maggie does not have ADD. She does not have ADHD. She doesn't have a problem paying attention. She just gets bored hella easy. Um, and so she... She gets bored hella easy, so she likes to fidget. Like, she, she always has to be, like, moving and touching or doing something. So she had an advent fidget calendar, or, or an advent fidget calendar, and every day had a different fidget toy in it. Where there's this one toy, and I don't know where it's at right now. There's this one toy, and it has four little legs, okay? And you put it in your finger like this, and you spin it. And it's just four little legs that spin. All right. The thing is that the legs move. You can move them back and forward, and you can, you know, make it make look like a number seven. And... She's like, oh, I like this one. Well, then she decides to make all the little legs on it number sevens, and then she starts spinning it. And then I realized what it looked like when she had it like that. My daughter's in here making swastikas, y'all. Look, listen. <laughs> the way my life is set up, I can't have my children in here making swastikas with their toys. <laughs> so I was like, uh, let's not make it sevens. Let's, let's, mm -mm, we're not going to do that. So she goes and plays with another toy, and I take that toy and kind of put it off to the side somewhere. I'm like, we're gonna, we're gonna worry about that later. Um, and then she got she gets her go-go turtle. Now, this turtle goes to the bathroom, and I'm thinking, how the hell is this thing going to the bathroom? Like, what do you mean it goes to the bathroom? I had to look up it. I had to look it up on YouTube University. I was like, what is go-go turtle? And then, of course, they have those people that do the reviews of toys, and they're like, Oh my god, welcome to the turtle! We're gonna be playing with Go-Go Turtle! I'm like, okay, I don't need the extra excitement. I just need to know how to make the thing shit itself, okay? That's all I'm looking for. How do you make the thing poop? And so we're looking it up, and I'm like, okay, so apparently you put sand in its mouth, it eats it, and then it, it poops out sand. Maggie goes, yeah, I've seen it on TV. Okay. So I was like, okay. So we fill its mouth full of sand. He won't poop. Now he's just sitting there with a mouth full of sand, singing the go, go, gotta go, 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 gotta go. Not only does it sing this song, it also mimics what you say. So if you say something, it will say it back to you. So like Mr. Coffee's brother was on the phone and he was like, go away, cro. I don't know where it's from, but he says it and Mr. Coffee like giggles or something. And he'll tell him, go away, crew. And the turtle picked up what Uncle Jesse had said and it was like, go away, crew. And he's like, that's the best gift ever. I'm like, yeah, except for we can't figure out why it won't poop. 
Here, the reason why it wouldn't poop is because she had shoved cotton candy in its mouth before we got a chance to figure out how to make it work. And so there's cotton candy pieces stuck in its throat and it's clogging the sand. And the sand that she got is Connect sand. So if you don't know what that is, it's sand that you can get wet and once you take it out of water, it's completely dry. Space magic. I don't know how it works. All right, sorry about that. I had to get up and stretch my legs. My back gets stiff sitting here sometimes. Um, so, so yeah, we finally figured out how to get the thing to poop itself. We get it to poop. She's all excited. Now there's like pink connect sand all over my house. And one of the games that Mr. Coffee's mom got for, or one of the things that Mr. Coffee's mom got for the whole family is a game. Now, we have a very competitive family. You have two gamers and two people that like attention, which would be me and Maggie. And so she bought the game Twister. Look, listen, it's been many years since Mama's played Twister, okay? And I'm not talking about the horizontal monster mash. I'm talking about legit Twister, okay? So I'm sitting there and I'm like... <laughs> we pull it out of the bag, okay? Pull it out of the bag. And I'm like, oh my god, Twister. We lay it out on the floor. Now, Mr. Coffee rearranged the living room so that uh, there's a lot more space for the ferrets to run, the dogs to run, and for us to play games. So we laid out on the floor, and Ryan's like, how do we play this? I'm like, you spin the dial, and whatever color it lands on, and whatever, you know, hand, foot, leg, knee, whatever, you, you put that there. So I spin it, and I'm like, see? Right hand, red. He's like, how do you know it's right hand? I'm like, look at the way the thumb is. Right hand, red. <laughs> he's like, oh. So he's like, can we play? Yeah, we can play. If you want to get beat, yeah, let's go, buddy. What do you think this is? This ain't no game. And he, Maggie goes, I thought it was a game. This ain't no game, Maggie. <laughs> so me and Mr. Coffee are sitting there, and he goes, I don't think I've ever really played this game. Oh, great. You about to lose too, huh? <laughs> All right, come on, loser. <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, come on, let's go. And he's like, you're a little too pumped for this. I'm like, look, listen, this used to be my game, okay? When I was little, I was, well, I'm still double jointed. I just don't like do gymnastics or anything anymore. I did kickboxing instead of gymnastics. And so I was just like, I'm pretty limber. I'm sitting there stretching. Like I'm about to run a marathon. I'm like, yeah, I got this. All right. Y'all, we went to go start playing the game. I went to go step on the little um, the little pad. Slip fell, hurt myself. All right, I'm gonna sit this one out. But when my back stopped hurting, I'm getting in there. <laughs> Mr. Coffee's just like, you're so pitiful. <laughs> it's like, shut up. I'll get in there. I'm telling you. So he plays around with the kids. Orion wins. Of course he does. Because Orion wins fucking everything. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, ugh. All right. It's my turn. Let's go. Let's go. And he goes, be careful stepping on it. Oh, you got jokes? Mr. Coffee got jokes, y'all. I ain't, I ain't about to joke in life. Don't joke with me. Okay? No. Are you a gesture? No? Then shut up. So I'm like, all right. Let's go. I got this. I got this. He's like, left hand green, right foot this. Y'all, at one point, I was doing like something like this where I look like an airplane. And then he goes, leg on blue. Look, listen. <laughs> the way my body's set up, it don't bend and move like that anymore. Meanwhile, Maggie's backwards doing like this bridge thing. And she's hitting all her colors. Orion, surprisingly, for a child that sits in his room, is very athletic. Because he's like all over the place too. And I'm like, excuse me, Ryan. I'm just going to go right up underneath you to touch this square or this circle. I'm just going to need you to scooch over a little bit. Y'all, I almost broke my damn neck. I was like, I ain't playing this goddamn game anymore. No because <laughs> at one point, Maggie had to step over me to reach one of her colors. And she couldn't reach it because she's too little. And she essentially like went to go throw a fit, forgetting that she was leaning over top of me. Knocked me over, almost broke my goddamn back. I was like, nah, look, listen. <laughs> y'all gonna have to calm down with this this rowdiness now. I'm trying to beat y'all, and y'all keep hurting me. He goes, we didn't hurt you the first time. You did that to yourself. Shut up, Mr. Coffee. <laughs> so then me and Mr. Coffee decide we're gonna play and let the kids spin the, de the thing for us. So they're doing it. And I'm like, how's that bad ankle and bad knee doing? He goes, fine, how's your tailbone? Shut up. And so we're, we're, we're doing the things. And at one point, Mr. Coffee, I don't know what he, he sneezed. He sneezed, and when he sneezed, he knocked not only himself over, but me over as well. So we have to do a rematch.
but we didn't get a chance to do the rematch yet because we decided that we were going to pull out a card game while we eat we ate dinner last night and we were going to play exploding kittens now i have never heard of this game and it was weird because when Ryan unboxed it, like when he opened it, he was like, oh, I have this game. You have this game. So I'm not sure if I, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure he would have probably gotten it from a subscriber. It's, I don't know. I don't, I don't I'm not a hundred percent sure where he would have gotten it. If I had to guess, probably Elisa, maybe, but I guess one of the subscribers got him Exploding Kittens, which if it was you... Thank you. I appreciate it. Now we have two sets, and now Maggie has her own deck, and Orion has his own deck. And I heard that there are expansions, which we will be looking into getting. So we decided to play this at dinner last night, and I'm like, what are we going to do? And he's like, you, and Mr. Coffee's reading the instructions to us, and I'm looking at Orion, I'm like, and Maggie's like, Mama. And Mr. Coffee's like, Orion. I'm like, let's do this. We start playing. Look, listen, I was out in three rounds. I was like, I, I, okay. All right, look, listen, we, we got to try it again. We got to try it again. Orion wins the first match. Maggie wins the second match. And then Mr. Coffee wins the third match. I refuse to have a fourth match because I was like, I'm the only one that's not winning here. So Mr. Coffee's like, just do one more round. And Orion's like, I'm out. I'm like, all right, okay. There's only three people. I got this. It's down to me and Maggie. And all I have is a see the future card where it lets you see the first three cards on top of the deck. And then I have this rainbow kit cat that's spitting rainbows. And But you need two of them to be able to take one of her cards. And I was like, I, I only have one. Crap. So there's three cards on the pile, the deck that you have to draw from. One of them is an exploding kitten. We've used all the diffusers. Mr. Coffee's out. And Ryan was, he wasn't playing. So it's just me and Maggie, and I'm thinking, I'm not about to get beat by a nine-year-old. This isn't about to happen. And Maggie's like, now, take it. I told y'all Maggie's doing better at reading. I just got her that new Randall Spangler uh, Bedtime Stories uh, book, which is really cute because Dagmer and Dewey, which I didn't realize the dragons had names. Um, so if you're a Randall Spangler fan and you didn't realize that, the, the two dragons have names. And I didn't even realize there's a girl dragon and a boy dragon. The boy dragon's name is Dewey. The girl dragon's name is, I want to say it's Dagmer. That's the way it looks when it's D-A-G-M-A-R, Dagmer. Anyways, so cause I know some of y'all went to a retreat where he was there, like Randall Spangler was there. And he probably was just like, yeah, the dragons are boy and a girl. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, she can't read these cards good. I got her. She can't read. No. Maggie made a whole goddamn fool out of me. Look, listen. This girl was reading like she was in 10th grade. She was just like, take a random card from another player. I don't want to hear nothing. Nothing about I don't know this word. I can't read. I need help. She, she duped me. She duped me. And she does this all the time. Maggie can read. Maggie just lazy. Okay, I told y'all, it's not me being like, oh, you're being a mean mommy. No, I'm not. She's lazy and she just doesn't want to read. So she'll ask me to her help because she knows I'll help her. Y'all, she was reading these cards with no help, okay? And the one card was like, uh... What was that? What did I tell you? She's scared to go to her bathroom, so she came downstairs to go to the bathroom. It was just little Maggie. So, okay, so I'm sitting there, and we each have three cards, okay? Or, I have two cards, she has three cards. And she gets one of those, like, match these two cards together, and you can uh, take a random card from someone in, in, that's playing. So she, of course, I'm the only one there, she had to take one of mine. What does she take? She takes the freaking, because uh, I had the cat, and what was the other card that I had? I just said that. I had the cat and something else. Oh, the see the future card. She takes the see the future card. I'm like, motherfucker. Now I'm just left with this cat that's throwing up rainbows. And he's useless with by himself. And I was like, what use are you, sir? So then comes time for her to draw. And I'm like, <laughs> and she goes, I would like to see the future, please. Okay. So we pick up the three cards and show it. She, she looks at them. She, and you can put them back in any arrangement that you want, okay? I don't know what's in her hand. 
So she puts them back. She lays them down. She picks a card and she goes, oh, okay. My turn. All I have is this god dang on cat. There's nothing I can do with it. So I have to draw. Y'all, I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating bullets like I got bubble guts and I'm 20 minutes from home, okay? I'm just like, okay. Am I gonna explode? Okay. Let me, I'm, okay, okay, I'm just gonna do it. So I pull the card and it's a, a it's an attack card where I can attack her and I don't remember what else it does, but I can attack her and make her, I think, make her draw twice or something. So I put it down, I'm like, attack! I'm like, why would she put, why would she leave that one for me to get? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Until she went to go play her nope card. And then she decides to play the skip card. Forcing me to draw again. And when I did, I drew the exploding kitten. I lost to a nine-year-old. She had a straight up strategy at nine years old. My daughter is an evil genius. Um, are you smarter than Maggie? Not, not today, or at least not yesterday. So we're gonna play again today because I demand a rematch, okay? She will not beat me. She is nine and supposedly wasn't able to read, but I, somehow she's able to beat me at exploding kittens. Look, listen, I'm not the best at games, <laughs> but I love playing. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, we're going to play this again tomorrow. You owe me a rematch. So we're going to play again today. But for right now, I have to go back to go help her clean her room because that was the other reason why she came out is because she probably needed help. So I'm going to let you guys go. So, uh, sorry, Daisy's sitting right here. So you guys will see me again on Friday, which is, that is actually the last live of the year. I thought for some reason the live I did last was the last live of the year. No, tomorrow's live is the last live or Friday's live is the last live of the year. Um, I will probably do adult coloring because I'm not starting another kit until Saturday. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's that. So I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I hope you all have a very happy new year. I hope you're all doing well. But with that said, I gotta get the hell out of here. I got a game to go research and think of strategy so I can win for once. Oh my God, these kids, I can't. So we had, like, you can, like I said, we had a great Christmas and it was just lots of fun, lots of games, lots of everybody kind of going off and doing their own thing for a bit and then coming together for dinner. We had a nice dinner, Mr. Coffee cooked dinner, which was, sh I was shocked. He cooked the whole dinner by himself. I was just like, not being like any kind of way, but the fact that he made dinner by himself without my help at all, we had turkey, we had mac and cheese, we had uh, homemade mashed potatoes, we had green beans, like cranberry sauce. Like we, we had a very nice dinner and he made it all by, like he was so proud of himself. And I'm like, you should be, you he's never really made anything completely by himself before, not like that. So I'm just like, I was stunned. He shut my mouth wide open. <laughs> But with that said, folks, I really got to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. I hope you continue to have a wonderful week. And I hope you have a very happy new year. But with that said, I will see you guys Friday night in live. If I don't see you by then, again, have a happy new year. And we'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, please remember to stay safe out here in these crafty streets. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face in public. Keep your six feet and always try. Be kind. Be courteous. Be cool. Bye.